All righty. We were <clears throat> here. Okay. Composition. Now the uh, the reverse image, the mirror image of composition, is what is known as division. So composition. Think about the word composing, starting from the unit and moving toward the whole. Division is the other way around, is the opposite. When you start with a whole and you make a conclusion about a member. For example, the union voted to strike, therefore each member voted to strike. But that's not true. It doesn't follow. Humans are the only animals capable of philosophical thinking, therefore every human being is capable of philosophical thinking. Uh, so, uh, when you start with a whole, the, uh, the entire group of people or objects, and you make a, um, uh, a conclusion about one part or one single individual, that's a fallacy of division. What applies to the whole does not need to apply to the, uh, in the individual, and vice versa. All right, the next fallacy. My doctor told me that I should lose some weight, but he is a fat man. Therefore, the conclusion that I must lose weight must be false. Professor Dawkins told us about the theory of evolution, but he is a uh, godless atheist. Therefore, evolution is false. Rousseau's theory of education, it must be garbage. Why? Because he was a monster. How can he speak of education? He had Ten children, and he abandoned them. Um, and also the woman with whom uh, he made these children. What's the problem with this kind of these kinds of arguments? The problem is that, as you can see, the uh, the arguer is not assessing the reasoning of the doctor, of Professor Dawkins, or of Rousseau. What happens is that the arguer is rather attacking the person, insulting the person, saying that person is stupid, that person is fat, that person uh, is an atheist. When you attack a person that way, you're not attacking the argument. You're not assessing the argument itself by the person. Consequently, your reasoning is fallacious. There's a name for that. It's a Latin name, and uh, the fallacy is known as ad hominem. Ad hominem means to the man, to the person. So it's, a, it's an ad hominem, ad hominem <coughs> attack. The ad hominem also has a version that is known as circumstantial and another version known as the U2 fallacy. Let me give you an example of circumstantial. The auto industry lobbyists have been arguing that tax reform is unnecessary. Why is that? Well, remember that it is in their interest to argue that way because it benefits the auto industry, right? If there is no tax reform. Um, problem here is circumstantial. When you try to invalidate, for example, an argument on the basis of the fact that uh, the circumstance seems to be uh, convenient to a person. Another example, I'm not surprised that you're a uh, mechanic suggests a complete engine overhaul. It's obvious 
Because look at the circumstances. It is convenient to uh, the mechanic. Obviously, he deals in uh, engines. He repairs cars. So it's convenient for him to say, you need uh, to redo the whole engine. Um, I'm not surprised you suggested to join a gym because you are a personal trainer. So it must be wrong that I need to, to uh, uh, join a gym. As you can see, these arguments are circumstantial. Based on the circumstances, you say that the conclusion doesn't fall. And the conclusion might follow, but not because uh, it is convenient to uh, the lobbyist, it's convenient to the mechanic or the personal trainer. That should not be the reason why it doesn't follow the conclusion. Let's move on to the next one. The, uh, the U2 example is, you know it, I don't have to tell you. This is uh, the, uh, the typical example um, when you hear a conversation between uh, kids. You know, they typically say, oh, you two, you're stupid, your mom, you two. That kind of um, argumentation, believe it or not, some adults uh, use that kind of argumentation. Child logic, I call it. For example, you argue that eating meat is immoral. Um, but you too used to eat meat. Therefore, eating meat is not immoral. Or uh, imagine this hypothetical conversation between uh, uh, a, uh, a child and her parent. Parent says, you should not smoke. Smoking is horrible. It's bad for you. It causes cancer. And, uh, and the child responds, but you smoke, or uh, you used to smoke, therefore, your argument must be wrong, must be uh, um, invalid. Well, actually, no. The argument is valid. Uh, what's invalid is the, uh, the, the, uh, your argument, the argument of the interlocutor. In other words, you are, you're trying to uh, undermine the argument that's, that you have to quit smoking because it's bad for your health. Um, you're not going to succeed in undermining their argument on the basis of the fact that the person, the arguer, uh, is a former smoker or is a smoker. Those aspects do not invalidate his argument. Let's um, move on to the next example. Last night I had an argument with Frank and I wished him dead. This morning they found him dead in his apartment. God, if I only knew I hadn't thought of that um, I wouldn't, I mean, I would not have said that. Um, so I killed him. I, I'm responsible. The problem with this kind of argument is that it is a false cause argument. Okay? <clears throat> and this is committed when, uh, of course, the... Uh, there is a false cause attributed to the effect. Now sometimes, or often I have to say, this argument seems to uh, uh, occur because there is an observation. Uh, there is an observation. So I do something and I observe something that comes next. Okay? For example, I ride my bike and then it rains. And so uh, I conclude that my riding the bike caused the raining just because the raining comes after my riding the bike. Okay? Um, typically, that's the form of the mistake. Something happens, uh, something happened, happens next, 
after that first event, and sometimes we tend to attribute the uh, the cause, the effect to uh, the first event, one event to the other event. We should oppose same-sex marriage because if we allow it, then eventually people would demand to marry animals, and we can't allow people to marry their animals. Therefore, we have to also um, abolish same-sex marriage. This is one example. Another example, even more dramatic, to see where the problem is. We cannot allow our children to uh, get out of the closet. We have to lock them in the closet. Why? Because if we do that, if we unlock the closet, then they will want to roam around the house. And if they roam around the house, the next thing is that they, uh, they will want to roam in a neighborhood. But if they do that, then after the neighborhood, they will be picked up by strangers in a van who uh, will have sex and slavery, um, they will rape them, they will murder them. We cannot allow rape and murder of our children. Consequently, we cannot allow that they uh, get out of the closet. We have to keep them locked in the closet. What's the problem with, it, with these arguments? The problem is that we are assuming that upon one, uh, one action, okay, as a result of one action, a, uh, a chain of reaction will, set, will be set off leading to an undesirable uh, situation or consequence. So undesirable that in order to prevent it, we have to prevent the first action. Um, but this is not by no means true. This is known as a slippery slope. Okay, Slippery slope, a conclusion is dismissed because it it's claimed that it leads to a chain of undesirable consequences. The next example. Paranormal activity is real because I have experienced what can be only known as a paranormal activity. Do you, do you see where the problem is? What was that? Paranormal activity. How do you know? Because it was paranormal activity. Okay. Objects that are less dense than water will float. But why is that? Oh, because they don't, they don't sink in. The book of God is divinely inspired. How do you know that? Well, it says so in a book. Uh, of course, smoking causes cancer. Why? Because the smoke from cigarette is a carcinogen. The problem with all these arguments is that they beg the question. They don't tell us why, the reasons why. They only repeat the same thing. Paranormal, I saw an event and it was paranormal activity. Why is that? Oh, because it was paranormal activity. Okay? So when, when you repeat the same thing, you can use different words, but it's still repeating the same conclusion. That's not an argument. That you, that's going in circle, and that is begging the question. The theory of evolution says that man comes from monkeys, but how can monkeys give birth to human babies? It's impossible. They never do. Therefore, Evolution is wrong. Um, we should stop using animals for scientific research. Oh, 
So you don't care about the progress of medicine. Or, what is your view on God? Zoe says to Mike. Mike says, I don't believe in any gods. And Zoe responds, oh, so you think that we are here by accident and all this, this design in nature is pure chance and the universe just created itself? Now, what is the problem with these arguments? Problem is that, as you can see, they assume more than the arguer actually um, lets out. This is a, uh, a fallacy known as the straw man. Straw man because a straw man is a fake man, is a representation of a man. It's really a, a scarecrow. It looks like it's dressed like a man, like a person. You know that if you go to the countryside, you see scarecrows. They put them hats and scarves and they dress them like, like people. But they're not people. That's the, uh, the metaphor to mean that, for example, the theory of evolution says that a man comes from monkeys. Well, you're not talking about the theory of evolution here. You are talking about a, uh, 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 some theory that is dressed like evolution. Just like a scarecrow is dressed like a man, but is not a man. Similarly, those people who say that the theory of evolution argues that we come from monkeys, they are making this error because the theory of evolution clearly does not say that we come from monkeys. Consequently, it is a straw man. You are misinterpreting. So let's put it this way. When you are intentionally, either intentionally or unintentionally, misrepresent a theory or an argument, you commit the straw man fallacy. Next example. Teaching teenagers to stay away from drinking by getting, by getting them drunk is like teaching gun safety by playing Russian roulette. Right? Um, well, it's actually not the same. To say that humans are immortal is like saying a car can run forever. If complicated mechanism, mechanisms require a maker, and the universe is a complicated mechanism, it follows that the universe requires a maker. All these are, are examples of false analogy. Okay? Remember that there is an argument from analogy. We study that. So when the analogy is bad, is poor, is weak, then the, uh, the argument suffers, commits this fallacy. False analogy. Okay. The next example. Last night I went to a, a town called Butt Creek, and everywhere I looked there were children. So I concluded that the inhabitants of that town are all children. Another example. This is the third apple that I taste from uh, this basket. And they're all tasteless. Therefore, all the apples in this basket are tasteless. Well, all these are examples of hasty generalization. You're too quick to judge. You can't make a, a judgment on the basis of a few samples. Remember, this relates to uh, the argument that we studied the inductive generalization. Now, some inductive generalizations are good, some are bad. Um, well, you have to decide which one is bad. Certainly, how many apples are in a, in a basket? If there are four apples, that might not be a fallacious argument. But if there are 50 apples and you only tasted three, that, that's a hasty generalization. There is a lot of commotion regarding saving the environment. We cannot make this world an Eden. 
What will happen if it does become Eden? Adam and Eve got bored there. And we don't want that. This is, this is just a madness. The crime in the city has, in fact, increased lately. However, let's consider that the weather has changed as well. Things change over time. Sometimes they are li uh, linked. Sometimes they're not. But only time will tell. What's the problem with these arguments? The problem is there's a red herring. A red herring is a special kind of fish that smells. When you uh, throw a fish, so the, the idea that the name came up, came up because imagine you have a, uh, uh, a, um, a dog, a hound, um, that is leading you to, uh, um, to a suspect. So it is sniffing the, uh, the smell of the suspect and taking you to a, a trail. Now the suspect, very smart, takes this red fish, this red herring that smells on the path and it throws off the, uh, the smell of the dog. Okay, so uh, it's essentially the fallacy is doing just the same. Throwing at you something that is not related, not relevant to the argument in order to confuse you and move you away from the actual argument. Now, in the first example, um, it is true that uh, that the world, um, that we cannot make this world perfect, and it might be true that Adam and Eve got bored in heaven, in the Garden of Eden, but this is not relevant to the argument uh, that we have to save the environment. In the second case, the crime in a city might have increased. However, let's consider that the weather also changes, other things change. Well, these things are irrelevant to uh, the question of crime. Okay, So if you uh, try to invalidate an argument by bringing up some other issues that might be legitimate issues but are not related to the uh, main issue, then you're committing the red herring fallacy. Oh, this one, I already had this example. Sorry. Um, the false analogy. Okay, so this ends the lecture on logical fallacies. Remember that this lecture is just a, a brief explanation of some of the most common logical fallacies. However, it doesn't mean that you are, you are dispensed from reading the textbook. You must read a chapter on logical fallacies. I have logical fallacies exercises in my website on my website, and also remember that the textbook has exercises. So do the exercises, um, read the textbook. I have exercises on my on my website. Do the exercises. Practice. Okay. Practice, and don't forget to ask questions in a discussion board. And I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you, and have a great day.